Hey y'all, I know I normally do a video once a week, but God has been showing me some really interesting things I wanna share with you guys this week, so I felt the real need to do an additional video, so that's what this is. And I feel that this week God has shown me some things about the mystical reality of our souls, and I wanted to share that with everyone today. Um, this came to me while I was in prayer throughout the week. It wasn't all at once. It was kind of a little bit over a few days and I would describe the way that this came about um, with the analogy of a glass of water and drops of food coloring. So as I was praying, if I was the glass of water, um, just kind of focusing my energy and my love on God as I was praying and just in clarity, God began to drop little drops of understanding that would just hit in my consciousness as a drop and then would just flower like you see in food coloring and water. And it was just drop a little bit later, another drop until it became this more opaque understanding is the best way I can describe it. Uh, but basically, I believe what he has taught me this week in prayer is reflective of the reality of the general route uh, that souls take. And this is no means to say that this is the only possibility. The church does, teaches, does teach that there are no constraints on God. God is capable of anything, but there are normal ways in which he functions through the church, and I believe that's what I was shown this week. And so I'm just gonna sum, sum up what I've learned so you all can share in that too. So he showed me that our souls are like vessels and that when you are baptized, God sparks a holy light in your soul, which is himself, it's that Holy Spirit. So you get baptized and this spark appears and I understood it to be, I would say a burning white light, but for the sake of being concise and having a better understanding, I'm going to describe it as a flame because I just feel that would be more easily understood with what I want to describe. Um, so as you grow in holiness, this spark in your soul intensifies in its heat and light and it grows and when you sin, it dims, or if you commit mortal sin, it snuffs out completely until such time as you go to confession and are reignited uh, with this flame. And then something that was really striking to me is that, so when you sin mortally, this goes out, but also when you sin venially, it was demonstrated to me that Venial sin is far more serious than we maybe give credit to it. Um, and it's because when you sin venially, not only are you degrading your own light and dampening that flame, but you are degrading the light of those who you're interacting with. So I was really convicted through, I was shown the example of, um, past occasions of immodest dress where any time that the way that I was dressed drove someone to have a lustful thought that I was directly responsible for the spark of pure goodness in their soul being degraded. And that come judgment day, I would be shown that that was on me, that I did that. Um, and when I saw how pure and good this light was, that was absolutely devastating. And this, it, it was made clear to me that this isn't clearly not just for modesty. This would be any name your venial sin if it's gossip. It's maybe not necessarily degrading the flame of the person you're gossiping about, but it's degrading the flame of the person that you're gossiping with because they're engaging in that with you. So it's really changed my perspective on relating to other people because I now understand that every single baptized Christian has this flame of God inside them. And the most important thing I could do is 
preserve everyone else's flame, not just my own, and also help everyone else's flame burn hotter. And the last thing I wanna do is to, to degrade anyone else's flame because that's God and that's horrifying. Um, so as you get closer and closer to sainthood, your flame burns hotter and brighter and more intensely and only roaring flames can enter into heaven. And that's because God himself is the fullness of the roaring flame and you could not withstand being in that level of heat and intensity unless you were also a roaring flame. Um, and this wasn't shown to me, but it made me think that maybe the burning in purgatory may be the, the flame that spark inside you burning brighter and brighter and brighter. And because you're not purified, it's burning everything that's not pure goodness in you away. And that's what's painful about it. So that by the time the flame has totally consumed you, you can then enter into heaven. Um, and this is also why baptism is required for a soul to enter into heaven, is because you have to be this roaring flame to enter into heaven and the first spark doesn't even exist until you're baptized. So that's, in summary, what God has taught me this week about souls. It just really blew my mind. It's really changing my perspective on how I relate to other people and the sense of responsibility that I feel in preserving and helping in the growth of everyone else's flame and avoiding with everything possible, anything I would ever possibly do to degrade anyone else's flame. So that's your little bonus video this week. Uh, join me in a few days for my regular scheduled video. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and share, and thanks for watching.